I mean, the military, they, they shape who you are. And when you leave the service, you don't really have a mission anymore that you might be working on. Um, you know, and you have to redevelop your civilian identity. Now, as a graduate student at the University of South Florida, I am the president of the Student Veterans Association on campus. We are a local chapter of Student Veterans of America. Our mission is to provide military veterans with the resources, support, and advocacy needed to succeed in higher education. Welcome back to Hiring America, the television show that helps veterans find jobs. Joining us now is Michael Dakduk. He's a decorated Marine who served in Iraq and Afghanistan, and he's now the executive director of Student Veterans of America. He's been awarded the U.S. President's Lifetime Volunteer Service Award. Welcome, Michael. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So what brought you to this organization in the first place? I graduated a year early from high school, and I always knew that academics came to me fairly easily. And I thought to myself, I wanted a challenge. I wanted to serve my country. So on my 18th birthday, having arrived in New York City, seeing Ground Zero, I chose to serve, join the Marine Corps, and eventually served in Iraq and Afghanistan. And while I was in Iraq and Afghanistan, actually my second combat de deployment coming back from Afghanistan, I heard about this movement for reform GI Bill benefits and student veterans organizing on various college campuses throughout the nation. And I felt very encouraged to go back to school and get involved in this grassroots movement for reform GI Bill and, and to connect with fellow veterans. And now we do have that new GI Bill and there are so many advantages to it. Absolutely. So the new post 9-11 GI Bill provides the highest in-state tuition and fees. So if you use it appropriately, you can essentially go to school like a full ride scholarship. And I think that's pretty incredible. Uh, and also it provides a housing allowance and book stipends and some other modest benefits that are provided there. And it's timely given that so many troops are gonna be making the transition from military service uh, into civilian society. And it can be so helpful to do an internship to learn more about a career, but that can be also financially challenging. Internships are something that's valued uh, in America in different industries, it, as well it should be. And it also leads to better networking and getting your foot in the door. But it's a challenge when military veterans over half have families. To get an internship might mean that they're not going to hold down a part-time or full-time job in addition to their studies. We need to think about delivering programs differently to student veterans because of the different things that they bring with them from military service. But you have ways to help fi them figure out how to pay for it, right? We have programs and services that we work on uh, to support veterans, and that's something that we do through our Student Veteran Success Corps, and that's where we uh, partner with different corporations in America and businesses to get them to think about delivering different programs and initiatives to veterans specifically. What kind of resources does SBA offer? We provide many different resources while they're in. The value of the peer-to-peer -peer support networking. We also provide chapter grants to our SVA chapters. Uh, we also provide leadership training to them. We have just opened up a National Veterans Center. And at the National Veterans Center, we're bringing veterans all throughout the country to receive training with different companies and corporations. Yeah. Across 16 cities, we're doing resume workshops so that veterans, when they graduate or whether they're going to school, they can polish their resume with industry professionals. Michael, what about you? Did you face any challenges when it came to finding a job? I did. I faced incredible challenges when I first made the transition. One thing I was unaware of in 2008 when I left the Marine Corps was that I was entering into a dire economy. At the beginning, I didn't understand why, why what my experience wasn't valued, or I felt that my experience wasn't valued fully. Uh, being a sergeant with two combat deployments, leadership training, leadership experience, even though I applied to so many jobs and I didn't receive responses, or the responses that I did receive were no, it, it didn't push me over the edge or make me think I can't get a job. When I started with Student Veterans of America, this is a small nonprofit startup. And I had never thought about entrepreneurship or working in startup organizations. So I encourage them to think about that too. Find your passion. I've, I've had the pleasure of testifying before Congress on multiple occasions on the GI Bill uh, and discussing tuition assistance and uh, the backlog that affects military veterans. I've worked with uh, the White House, and now I've worked with mem folks in corporate America, CEOs, uh, senior level leaders, and many other leaders in the non-governmental space. So you can be a success story. It just takes 
takes time, and it takes an incredible amount of passion and drive. Some veterans really do want to go back to a four-year education, but there are obstacles they face. Why can that be so difficult? One of the challenges that they face when they come back is the administrative challenges. Most students have to navigate the bureaucracy of their higher education campus when they embark on their four-year degree. Veterans have to not only navigate the bureaucracy of their college campus, mm -hmm. but also the bureaucracy of the Department of Veterans Affairs and getting their GI Bill. Then there's the integration issue. Integrating for the very first time. These are gonna be folks that have been gone from civilian society for one, two plus years, one or more combat deployments. They have a very interesting background. A lot of these folks are going to succeed and thrive in higher education and in the public and private sectors. It's just providing them with an opportunity. Once they have that opportunity, they're going to outperform everyone else in the workforce and in college. Absolutely. So what if someone wants information on some of these services like SVA, where do they go? If a military veteran is making the transition and wants to go back to college and is looking for that peer-to-peer uh, that -peer support network to fill that, that void, that missing sense of camaraderie, they can go to our website at studentveterans.org and we have a chapter map that shows where we're located all across the country. Thank you so much, Michael Dactic of Student Veterans of America. Thank you for having me, Gigi, I appreciate it.